if nothing is done soon, we're going to be in big trouble. We need energy 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, because we need it for teaching, we need it for administration. Our labs, our experiments, they need power uninterrupted. The future is not just about oh, do we, another power station that's fuel driven and so on. The issue is about renewable that is not harming to the environment. We're currently on the LS campus of the university. Um, the Institute of Technology is more on the east side of the campus where we conduct research on renewable energy, specifically solar energy, both indoors and outdoors. Uh, we start off with very small cells, so we do the deposition of substrates, um, completing a solar cell and then actually going into kilowatt range systems that we then do either grid tie, um, we do grid assist and then also off grid. In terms of the state of the art equipment, we look at the, the electrochemical aspects of these small cells as well as the solar panels. Most of our research which we conduct is based on sustainable energy uh, development which focus on rural settings. So what we've done over the years, we've been able to adopt and use our findings in the laboratory as well as our research center to generate a rural community engagement program that has transformed the way South African government is providing alternative energy source in rural community. The, the Institute of Technology has been extensively involved in the drafting and crafting of the South African Solar Roadmap. So this is the guiding document for the next 30 years in how the Department of Science and Technology specifically um, sees uh, the development of renewable energy and solar energy in particular. And, and some of our focus areas were then based on the, the, that document. It's becoming more and more viable to set up these systems. So that means that if you're in, you know, in a domestic sector, it makes you less dependent on um, ESCOM for that matter. And, and if you consider you have kids at home and they are studying and suddenly there's load shedding. You know, so, so this type of technology is one of the things that can make a difference there to ensure that you, know, you have at least a fighting chance uh, when you do need electricity. The research was driven by the ongoing energy crisis in South Africa. Given this crisis, we can no longer continue with the conventional building design in the sense that there is need for building to be self-sustainable. That is, building should be designed to naturally adopt um, ambient weather uh, uh, factors such, such as wind, solar radiation to generate natural heating as well as cooling in the building and also adopt uh, sunlight to generate daylighting in building. By so doing, we found that passive solar design buildings do not only save energy for the building owners, but also reduce pressure on the national grid. Our core focus is of course to create a critical mass of experts in South Africa on renewable energy in this case specifically solar energy. So for us, uh, my main focus uh, um, as the director of the institute is to create a multi-skilled scientist, so to speak. We want to get well-rounded students who can meaningfully participate in the global economy. One of the things that we are very proud of is our uh, confocal correlated microscope, um, where we look at various levels of materials to determine defects, to determine the electronic properties, the structural properties of those materials. And that will determine the efficiency of the end product. This microscope will use it to detect or to study the vibrational mode of materials and to determine their crystallinity and their chemical composition and structures. So for you to understand the properties of this material, you have to go beyond the subatomic level. So to understand what's happening at subatomic level, you need instruments that have high resolution like this instruments. So to ensure that our 
technological developments uh, is sustainable, you know, we need a continued investment. And I think through the Department of Science and Innovation, they've already shown their commitment. Over a very long time, we've been involved in this research for over a decade and a half. So the, the need is there, and also people are starting to notice what we do. But we, of course, we need to develop faster. We need some facilities. You know, we need that kind of investment to ensure that you know, the prototyping can be rapid. Um, so we, from the drawing board to the product, you know, it takes a, a matter of days. I'm very excited that we are out there among institutions that are developing new forms of knowledge but also new technologies and this site and this center uh, here at the University of Forte it, it, it gives us the edge in that in respect it gives us it puts us right there uh, uh, at the front among you know some of the top universities in the world and secondly we are training new generations of scientists. By in 10 years, 20 years and so on, these scientists who come out of here will be developing even more sustainable, more sophisticated forms of energy sources, especially in the area of renewables. So I'm very, very excited and I'm very confident that we are there. What we need to do now is to increase numbers. We increase numbers and have critical mass, have a buzz here. But I'm, I'm happy to see they are here now, you can see them. They're here, but we need critical mass, and that will then catapult us to the top.